Hi, I'm Danielle the Chef. I've cooked for the likes of Sean Diddy Combs, Jan Winter, and Gary Sheffield, just to name a few. Come into my home and let me show you how I work my soul fusion magic. I'd love to teach you something. Today we're gonna be making a risotto style jambalaya. So first off, we're gonna start with putting our risotto on. So we've got our warm chicken stock here and we're going to sweat onions and shallots until they're translucent, along with a little bit of chopped garlic. So let's start there first. Have a little olive oil here, we've got our pot on. So we're gonna start with a little bit of red onion, a little bit of diced shallot, and we're gonna sweat those until they become translucent. So here we have a little chopped garlic. We're gonna add a little bit of this to this mixture and get things cooking. I love this dish because it's one that I first had when I went to New Orleans, probably around five or six years old. But I ate it first when I was about nine in the French Quarter with my dad. And this is my take on elevating that dish and making it a lot simpler so that you can re replicate it and make it at home in 30 minutes. So here we have some risotto, which is an aborio short grain rice. So we're gonna pour this in now. Our red onions, shallots, and garlic are all translucent, no color. We're gonna reduce our heat just a little bit. We've got everything mixed in. The rice is fully coated with the oil, the shallots, the red onions, everything's translucent. We're now gonna add a little bit of white wine. So we're gonna pump our heat back up because we're gonna hear the sizzle in a second. And then we'll begin to add our chicken stock and we'll begin to cream out our risotto basically so that we have a velvety rich risotto once we begin the second process. So now we're stirring the risotto and we're beginning to cream it, which is bringing the starches out. So now we're gonna slowly ladle some of our chicken stock into this rice mixture and continue to stir so that we can bring the starches out in the rice. So at this point, we wanna keep our heat up. And every time that liquid reduces, you add more and you continue to stir and that will continue to bring out the starches and cream the risotto. This is a dish that we can, you can start before work. You can actually cut up all of your ingredients and finish putting it together once you get home. It's a one-stop shop. You've got your protein, you've got vegetables, you've got your starch, everything's here. It's a dish that kids can enjoy. Parents love it. It reheats well for work. In addition to that, you can change up the stock, make it completely vegetarian change up all of the accoutrements and kind of make it your own. So it's one of those dishes that you can completely play with, completely personalize it, and just make it what you want. We're gonna start our second part of the dish. We're gonna get a little olive oil in here. Cooking is about building flavor. So it's not about just seasoning at the beginning or the end, it's throughout your dish. So you have to taste and readjust and make sure it's perfect. So now we've got our oil in the pan. We have assorted bell peppers here. We've got red, yellow, green, and orange. I'm gonna put those in. Hear that music going. We're gonna add a little bit of the chopped garlic to this as well. So we're gonna season this. A little more Himalayan pink salt, a little white pepper. You can even add your red pepper flake in here as well and a little bit of your Creole seasoning in as well. You can always readjust and add, but it's about adding a little bit. You can always put more in, but you can't take it out. My grandfather taught me that. Now you add your shrimp. This is a two-step process because we're gonna take them out. You don't wanna put too many, you don't wanna crowd your pan, you don't want them to steam, you don't want them to get a lot of color. You want them to cook evenly, turn pink, and once they turn that color, you take them out, you remove them, and you wait until your risotto is done so that you can continue the process. So we're gonna let those go. I'm gonna continue to stir our risotto here. It's looking beautiful. When you're in the store and you're at your fish counter, fish should be bright, it should be smooth, no slime, not soft to the touch, it should be firm to the touch. They should be bright gray in color, and that's how you know you've got some really great fresh seafood. So you see the shrimp, they're starting to turn pink now. That's how we know they're starting to cook a little bit. My grandfather was a chef for 35 years. Started out in the Army, ended up at Harlem Hospital and help to uh, create food service there. So my love of cooking started from there and I was left over 300 handwritten recipes. A risotto recipe was actually left and I've kind of combined them together to create this risotto jambalaya that we have here. So now we're gonna remove the shrimp because they're nice and pink. Add a little more liquid. So now we, we're gonna add three bay leaves, 
to our risotto. We just want to infuse it. It adds richness to the dish. It, it gives it depth, and that's what you look for in a dish like this. You want it to taste like you know, you've been cooking all day. So now we're gonna add our celery back to our pan with our peppers and garlic. We can add our andouille sausage, full of spices packed with flavor. For me, it's something that I, I feel you can't eat alone, so it's definitely an accoutrement and adds flavor and body to dishes, as chorizo does in a lot of uh, Latin-style cooking. So that's what andouille is to the soul food world. Just adds flavor and swag to your dish. So now we're gonna add a little Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce is a traditional ingredient in this dish. We're gonna add our shrimp back. We've got our grilled chicken breast here. I like heat, so I'm gonna add a little more fresh red pepper flake here. A little parsley now. I'm gonna readjust with a little Creole seasoning because I like the heat. And now we're gonna slowly start to add in our risotto. Minus our bay leaves. You remove them because they're not edible and you shouldn't have anything on your plate that isn't edible. All right, so now we're gonna finish off by adding our tomato. So now we've got everything in here. We're gonna add some more parsley, our Pecorino Romano and Parmesan cheese mixture here. Make sure your heat's up because we're on the home stretch now. We're gonna taste and see if we need to readjust our seasoning because that's important. And there you have it guys, it's almost done. We've almost got a home run with this risotto. Smelling amazing. You can add more cheese, less cheese. It's all a personal preference and that's what I love about cooking. That's the beauty of cooking. So get your beautiful casserole dish. Remember this can be served with a side salad, anything funky. Kale and spinach salad with a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette. It goes perfect with this. We're gonna finish this up with a little more parsley and a little more of that cheese mixture. And there you have it, guys. Beautiful jambalaya risotto. Hope you enjoy.